Shalom, beloved, a word. As I was communing with the Most High, he took me to the book of Daniel chapter seven, and I just wanna share that with you now. This is a pretty quick word, but even as I originally determined not to do the video and that I was just uh, receiving from the spirit, it kept laying on me, so I'm gonna share it with you, okay? We're in the book of Daniel chapter seven, all right? And forgive me as I get things together. Okay, bear with me just a little bit of patience. We're talking about the beast. We're in the book of Daniel chapter seven, and we're also in the book of Revelations chapter 13. One of the things that you have to understand is everything that is has already been. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything that you do has already been done. And when we look at these four beasts in the book of Daniel, we recognize that they are all, all these systems were put in place be, as a punishment for Yasharel. They were used to punish Yasharel for us turning to the other nations, following after them and their ways. Okay, before we begin, Yah, my ancestors, Yah of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I ask that you come in now and bless Yasharel and all those listening. Open up thy words of life unto them as we give you praise, honor, and glory this day and forevermore for your words. Let the spot fire of the Holy Spirit rest upon us, enlighten us, breathe in us the true life that can only come from you and your living word. Thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, who died and shed his blood on Calvary for us, Father. We want to thank you this day for the redemption and for him going in and asking for our forgiveness and our mercy. And let our faith stand forth as Abraham's, betraying our righteousness because we believe you, Father. Let it be accounted unto us for righteousness and let us be a friend unto you, Yahweh, the one true and only God of gods, Elohim of Elohims, one by thyself alone, there be none nigh thee. Bless us this day and forgive us our sins for they are many. Have mercy, Father, as you cast down our enemies and forgive us in the mighty name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. We ask, believe, and thank you for all thy mercies this day and forevermore. Amen. As I was communing with the Most High, he took me into the book of Daniel. And as I was reading it, I was getting revelations that a lot of what has already gone on is going on again. It's replaying itself, the vestiges of it are within these systems that we're in right now, beloved. I'm going to start at, let me make sure I'm in the right spot. Okay. I'm in the book of Daniel chapter seven, starting at the 11th verse. And I beheld then because of the voice of the great words, which the horn spake, I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Okay, I seem to be ahead. I seem to be ahead. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I want to talk about the fourth beast. The fourth beast. All right. There was four beasts. The first was like a lion and had eagle wings. And I beheld to the wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. The first was like a lion. He's talking about the four beasts that came up from the sea, diverse one from another. We know that the sea represents nations and peoples. 
Okay, so when these four beasts come up from the sea, they are ruling over nations and peoples. And the first was like a lion and had eagle's wings, and I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked, and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man, and a man's heart was given to it. Yes, when we look at this, we understand this represents Nebuchadnezzar, but we also understand the spiritual meaning of it, that the lion goes out brave. Very few things can stand before it. And it had eagle's wings, which meant it was swift in its motion. Not only was it conquering and terrifying, but it was swift in its movement. But I beheld to the wings were plucked. Its swiftness was slowed down. It was put back upon its feet. And it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man. Now, all of a sudden, that power, that bestial power was slowed down and it was made to stand upon the earth as a man. And a man's heart was given it. It no longer had that lion's heart. As we look at nations warring against nations, we see a nation that we know so well that it was like a lion, it was swift, it had eagle's wings as it went throughout the nations conquering and destroying. But suddenly the wings are clipped and it's on the earth and it's standing and it's considering, okay? It no longer has that great power, although it still thinks it does, but now suddenly the wings are clipped. It's not moving as swiftly as it did before. Now we're going to the second beast and I behold another beast, a second, like a bear, it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. And they said thus unto it, arise, devour much flesh. Yes, this bear, many people speak about the fact that the bear represents uh, Persia and Medes, but many other people uh, speak about the fact that the bear can also represent Russia because many nations have symbols, mascot symbols, spiritual symbols of animals and beasts. And this same said bear, okay, it raised up itself on one side. Okay, you have two major uh, communistic powers right now. You have Russia and you have China. But right now, the bear is raising itself up in its strength on one side, although the communistic powers are two. But you only see one raising up right now. Okay, wait a minute. And it had three ribs in the mouth of it between the teeth of it. When you look at the certain places that were taken from it, that the bear is taking back, we can liken it to the days of Persia Medes or Medes Persia, but you can also bring it up to current, what you're seeing playing out. And they said unto it, arise, devour much flesh. And we see it doing, taking life right now. Okay, I'm going to, and after this, I beheld, and lo, another, like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast also had four heads, and dominion was given to it. This one, many likened unto Alexander. Okay, he was swift and powerful in his conquering and those four wings of a fowl the beast also had four heads that's those four generals that took over when alexander the great died young and dominion was given to it i'm going to keep going because i'm giving to you just as it came to me um wait a minute and thus i beheld after this i saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Okay. 
we know this is representative of um wait a minute let me get it let me get it wrong okay but we also know that present day we are living in the modernized Roman society, many of the vestiges of it, many of its habits, many of its actions are based on Rome or many of those paganistic behaviors that it had, okay? But it is diverse. What do I mean? It's not exactly like the old one. This is that mystery Babylon that they talk about. And I beheld a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong, exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had 10 horns. This particular beast is an isolationist. This particular beast, although it deals with the other nations, it is diverse because it encompasses them, it's conquered many, and it stands alone. Wait a minute. I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before, wait a minute. Yes, yes, yes. Let me go back. And after this, I saw in the night visions and behold a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, like that Roman empire devouring, it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. And it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had 10 horns. You can look at it like the 10 powers of NATO, if you will, it had 10 horns. These horns representing power or, or kingdom, or a, a, a king, 10 horns, okay? I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. When you think of the so-called America, you look at it and it was Spain, France and Britain that had actually settled it. It was three, Spain, France, and Britain that had came in. But in the end, in the end, this little horn, wait a minute, before whom there were, I considered the horns and behold, there came up among them another little horn before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots and behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Eyes, when we talk about the eyes, the eyes in and of itself, they're silent. When we look at the Hebrew word, ayin, and I might not be pronouncing it right, so those who just got more, bear with me. Okay, ayin, it can either represent the good eye or the evil eye, okay? It sees but does not speak the eye, okay? Therefore, it represents humility. On the other hand, it can represent idolatry as well as slavery born out of the heart of envy, okay? We're talking about that eye, the eye on that horn, okay? In this horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Okay, let me finish. When the eye is evil, it becomes a slave to the purposes of sin and an evil impulse. That's why it says, if your eye is dark, the whole body is dark. Okay, but if it's light, the whole body is light because the eye has a, outer realm and an inner realm. And what do I mean? If your heart is good, when a person looks in your eyes, they see the goodness in your spirit. But if your eye is evil because your heart is evil, when you look out, or sorry, when that person, that evil looks out, 
okay? That idolatry, that greed, that envy, that lust, that murder is there, and that darkness in the spirit is there. And therefore, when you look in someone's eyes, you see what's coming out of them. All right, let me finish. When the eye is evil, it becomes a slave to the purposes of sin and the evil impulse. The heart and the eyes are spies of the body. They lead a person to transgress, okay? The evil eye looks towards the mouth and how it might consume for itself in greed and envy. Okay, now the mouth is, it's, um, I could be saying these words wrong, pay, open to blow, to scatter. It's an opening, it's a doorway, it's an entrance, okay? Most of the time when you're dealing with just the eye, you're dealing with silence. But you remember this particular eye is also in this horn with eyes like the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. Why did it have the eyes of a man? Because it was envying, it was coveting, it was rapine in its desires and its conquests. I beheld to the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as white as snow and the hair of his head like the pure wool. His throne was like the fiery flame and the wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him and 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set and the books were opened. I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake, okay, boastfulness. This is where that horn, the horn normally represents a nation or a kingdom. That horn is representative of a conquering nation. This horn also has eyes, eyes like that of a man that it can see, all right? And I beheld them because of the voice of the great words which the horn, this nation spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and the body destroyed and given to the burning flame. When he's talking, these horn, this horn with these eyes and this great mouth speaking great things, it's on that fourth beast. And I beheld them because the voice of the great words which the horn spake, this horn representing a nation, a kingdom, a group of people, if you will. And I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. There is a time coming, beloved, the judgment. Okay, now wait a minute. I wanted to bring it down, forgive me. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings which shall arise out of the earth. These are four kingdoms, okay? I'm moving down. And the 10 horns that were in his head, wait a minute, because I know I'm moving around. I'm talking about that fourth beast. And the 10 horns that were in his head and of the other which came up and before whom three fell, even of that horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke very great things, whose look was more stout than his fellows, okay? I beheld, and that same horn made war with the saints and prevailed against them. They're talking about a nation that made war with the saints and prevailed against them. Yes, where we lost our identity, where we were taken away from our homeland, where we were made to serve, where we lost everything until we came back into the knowledge of ourself. Now, I'm going to move around, beloved, because I'm just going to give it as I got it, okay? And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey Yah, okay? I may have jumped ahead, but the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion. Who? This horn, this great beast. Judgment, meaning the most high, shall sit to consume and destroy it unto the end. Okay. Oh, I skipped around. I'm coming back. One of the other things 
And I'm going to verse 26, and I'm going to move around. Bear with me. And he shall speak great words against the Most High and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And to think to change, to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of time. He shall think to change times and laws. Right now, beloved, we are seeing where they went up into the Senate Congress to make a vote. Why? To stop changing time or to leave the time change as it is, changing times and laws. What laws? They've made laws where um, instead of honoring holy matrimony that Yahuwah instituted between a man and a woman, they've changed laws to where they let the same marry the same, which is never part of the laws. And at the same time, they change that which is into that which it isn't and say that it is. Why? Because they are changing times and laws. You have men masquerading as women going in, taking the spaces and places of females, claiming they are what they aren't, although they say they are, but they aren't. Why? Because they are changing times and laws. I want to finish, beloved. I'm going to the book of Revelations because you see the mixture and the blend of these same four beasts when John is talking about them in Revelations 13. Okay, bear with me. I know I'm all over the place, but I just got to give it the way I get it. Okay. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise out of the sea having seven heads and 10 horns and upon his horns, 10 crowns and upon his head, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the third beast, remember, moving swift, conquering like Alexander the Great did till he died and his four generals like those four uh, feathers on the back of, of the leopard, okay? Uh, like a leopard. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, tearing up, destroying all the land around it, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. You are looking at the culmination of the three beasts in the fourth beast, but it's written about differently in the book of Revelations. This same beast which we are under now, which is coming under judgment. This same one who speaks with this little horn that became a great horn full of eyes of a man and it spoke blasphemous and boastful things against the most high because it has become full of itself, believing itself its own power to change laws. What laws? No, not the laws of man because laws of man are fallible. They can change with the ebb and flow of his mind and heart. We are talking about the laws of Yahuwah himself, even the law of nature, they have thought to change times and laws. This is that horn that we're speaking about, that nation that speaks great things with these eyes that look and covet and sin, and it's in their heart. They're full of envy. Remember what Yeshua said. It is the eye, if it's full of light, the whole body is light. But if the eye is dark and the entire body is in darkness, well, it's telling you this particular horn, this nation is looking through a dark eye. It's looking through an eye, forgive me, beloved, that has an evil impulse. It's insatiable in what it wants. It's like hell in the grave. It can't be satisfied no matter how much it gets. The only thing it says is more, more, more. No matter how much it has, it's on to its next conquering, not because it doesn't have enough, but because it's no longer about what it has. It's about the joy of conquering and defeating. Let me move on. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet 
were as the feet of a bear and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now I'm going to go down, beloved, to verse five. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, just like that little horn that came up and plucked up those three horns before it, where it had eyes. And what is the eye? The eye sees, but does not speak. Therefore, in some cases, it represents an attitude of humility. But on the other hand, it can represent idolatry. One of the ways that many people idol worship is because they see something. Either it's an object, it's a person, it's an idea. Um, idolatry, beloved, okay, as well as slavery, because it's born out of the heart of envy. They're enslaved by their lust, by their greed, by their covetedness. It actually makes the enslaver the slave because of what it causes him to do. What is that? The eye. But this particular horn is so deep, it's given a mouth, okay? Wait a minute. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemy and power was given unto him to continue 40 and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against Yahuwah to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nation. Okay. This book, it was working interchangeably with me and with Daniel Seth, okay? There is a time because of our sins, we're given unto these nations, but we are now seeing the judgment come in. This is where I'm going back to Daniel 7, forgive me. And if we look right here, verse 25, and he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand for a time and times and dividing of time. But the judgment shall sit, the judgment being Yahuwah, his word, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given unto the people of the saints of the most high, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And all dominion shall serve and obey him. Okay. This is what came to me, beloved, that... Many times when one thing is being, and it's in its full representation, it is also mirroring another. At the same time, when we're reading in the book of Daniel and recognizing those four beasts fit the time that Daniel was in, we also recognize the spirit in those four beasts also recognize represent the days we are in, beloved. That fourth beast encompasses the spirit of all three before him, as well as his own diversity because of its makeup. And he's talking about it. We see it in the book of John or in John in the book of Revelations because he's giving that same description. I hope that this word came through to you, beloved. I hope that you are blessed by it because I'm giving it as I got it. And we are in those times. We are seeing that great horn that spoke such big, boastful things against Yahuwah that thought to change times and laws. And we are living through it, watching it occur. Those laws that go against the laws that Yahuwah set in place, those natural laws, as well as those holy laws. We are watching it and we are told to go along with it to they teach it to children in schools today if you're a he it's okay if you're a she if you're not a they or them or it it doesn't matter and they are doing this societally to change laws because they have that seared conscience beloved but the last thing 
that I want to say. All right. I want to start at 25. Okay. And he shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and shall think to change times and laws, even laws of right and wrong laws that we know the truth about forgiving himself when every opportunity presents of murder, of robbery, of witchcraft, of idolatry while holding others to the letter of this same said law and excusing himself for greater crimes. But let's go on. He shall speak great words against the most high and shall wear out the saints of the most high and think to change times and laws, even the scripture. They look to manipulate the book. They think to change times and laws. And they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and the dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit. The judgment is sitting, beloved. And they shall take away his dominion to consume and destroy it unto the end. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the most high whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and all dominion shall serve and obey Yah. Okay, beloved, they shall serve and obey Yah. I hope this came through. I will go back over it if I can, but right now I wanted to get this out. Beloved, it is a word. Shalom.